In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you. We glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O oh Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sin at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy on us, for you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings. I invite you to follow along on the back of your bulletins as we take in the portions of God's Word for this second Sunday of end time 
um, final judgment. As we, as we look at these readings, you'll recognize that our Old Testament prophecy from Daniel is foreshadowing what Jesus talks about to his disciples in our gospel lesson for today. We hear from Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. As in Revelation, uh, numbers in the Bible mean things, and the number ten signifies completeness. You multiply that, you're intensifying the idea of completeness. Um, thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten times ten times ten multiples of that were were attending the judge, the Ancient of Days, and the, the body that is gathered before him. 10,000 times 10,000. Think of the number of people from Adam and Eve, the first given the gift of life, to the last person born before Jesus comes back on Judgment Day to judge the earth. Every one of them gathered before him. That is the picture that Daniel holds up for us to see. If you would turn to page 99 in your hymnals, we will continue with the singing in unison of our psalm for the day, Psalm 90. <laughs> Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Our second lesson for today is taken from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. We hear chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, recognizing that that Judgment Day is certainly going to come, but that it's going to come at a time that we are not aware, we have this encouragement. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together, through, uh, live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. That statement, he died for us so that whether we are awake, physically alive, when Jesus Christ returns on Judgment Day, or asleep, those who have passed away as believers, uh, we will be together with him. There was, there was a fear in the early Christian church that if you died before Jesus came back, you might somehow miss out to some degree. And Paul is, is putting that fear to rest. This is the word of our Lord. Hallelujah. Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise for the reading of this morning's gospel lesson. We be to you, o Lord. This morning's account is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel. We read chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, 
Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for the one for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 18 in your hymnals. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue with the singing of our hymn of the day, hymn 209, Day of Wrath, O Day of Mourning.
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours as we hear and reflect upon God's holy word. Our text for today is our gospel account. And as we, as we begin this lesson that Jesus shares with his disciples, we hear the opening verse of our text. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Heavenly Father, through your word of truth, strengthen us in saving faith, deepen our understanding of your love in action on our behalf, and equip us to live our lives as your children here and to share the good news of the Savior with others as we have opportunity. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, take a look at the front of your bulletin. Very simple picture, right? a sheep, and a goat. If you had a flock of these and they were out all in the same pasture mixed up, could you separate them out at the end of the day? There are some distinct differences, aren't there? The goat has a longer neck. The goat has flat hair where the sheep is all this bunched up woolly stuff. And if you watch them, you find out they've got a different temperament too. Goats and sheep behave a little differently. If you were an experienced shepherd, you would have absolutely no problem making sure 100% of the sheep were over in one pen and 100% of the goats were over in another pen. Even if you had a black sheep stuck in there, even if there was a goat that was gray and black and not just brown, you would know, you could tell. Our Savior knows too. And that's a comforting thing for us believers and a terrifying truth for unbelievers. Last words. Last words can be important. You go and speak to someone who's in failing health and you want to make sure that you get a chance to tell them everything that's on your heart, everything that's important, and there might be words that you long to hear from them person finishes their, their career and before they go out the door they might say a farewell and those could be important or valuable words. Today we're looking at some last words. Last words of Jesus. Do you remember some of Jesus' last words? How about the words he spoke from the cross? It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Or how about the last words he tells the disciples before he ascends to heaven to rule all things by his powerful word? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Powerful words. Last words. Well, the, the verse that follows our text this morning lets us know that these are powerful last words and that we should pay attention to them. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days it will be the Passover and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. The words we're going to look at this morning are the last words of teaching, of instruction, Jesus gave his disciples before the events of his sacrificial death began. And so we do well to pay attention to them. When the Son of Man comes in his glory... Jesus is standing there in front of his disciples in his humble state. Did not have a place to lay his head. Didn't own anything. Had hidden, laid aside the use and the show of his divine glory and power so that he could be our humble servant. And in his humble state, he's telling them how he's going to be when he comes back. Then the Son of Man, a term that Daniel 
was inspired to use to talk about the coming Messiah, and Jesus says, I am he, I am that Son of Man. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, showing his full divine glory and majesty, what picture did you get from our reading in Daniel? The courtroom setting, right? Picture the highest court ever. And the judge is coming out in his full authority and power of office. The Son of Man. Think of that courtroom setting again. Who is there to help the court proceedings follow in an orderly manner? To help the declarations and judgments of that judging official be carried out. There's the bailiff, there are various sergeant-at-arms or security people who remand the guilty to custody or announce and, and help free the person who's declared innocent. Who is here in this courtroom setting? And all the angels with him. Now who are the angels? Powerful spirit beings created by God, according to the writer of the Hebrews, to serve those who are going to inherit the kingdom. How many angels are there? Do you remember when Jesus was arrested? Peter drew his sword and cut off the ear of one of the, the temple servants. And Jesus said, put your sword away. If, if I wanted to, couldn't I have called out to the Lord for help? And he would have sent 12 legions of angels to help. A Roman legion was comprised of 6,000 soldiers. So 12 legions would be 72,000 angels. Is, is God telling us that that is the number of angels there are? No. He didn't say, and God the Father will send all 72,000. He just said, that many could come and help. But here we have all of the angels who always do the Father's bidding, who always see God face to face. What a powerful courtroom scene. And that term glorious is shown again in the same sentence. He sits on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him. As I mentioned in the reading from Daniel, as, as it said, thousands upon thousands will attend him, that's the angels. 10,000 times 10,000 will be in front of him. Every single human being who had ever been given the gift of life will stand before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And we're looking at the distinction between them. What makes them sheep? What makes them goats? And we'll hear that as we, as we go through the devotion. Then the king will say to those on his right, so the Son of Man is not just a judge, but he's the king. And we are reminded of what the Father did for him after he humbled himself and made him nothing, taking on the form of a servant so that he could obey the Father's will in our place and so that he could die on the cross to pay for our sins, the Father exalted him, lifted him up. And one of the parts of his exaltation is that he is the one, the King, Jesus Christ, who is coming back to judge the earth. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Blessed. What a great term. God blessed Adam and Eve when he put them in the Garden of Eden and gave them the gift of fruitfulness. God blessed Adam and Eve after they had sinned with the promise of a Savior. And God blessed Abram and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph, and Moses, 
as they were called to faith in him as he graciously dealt with them in a way that they did not deserve. Blessed. That's that, that's that Greek word charis. They received God's grace. They didn't put in so many hours at so much an hour and then hand in their, hand in their time card and say, you owe me this much to the boss. God dealt with all of these people in a way that they did not deserve, but that he lovingly wanted to give them. All of these people, all of these sheep who are on his right, he says, you are blessed by my Father. We're looking at a, a blessed lot of people here. Uh, who qualifies for that? Jesus Christ came and died for everyone who will be saved. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. There is our distinction between the sheep and the goats. The sheep were brought to faith by the Holy Spirit, trust in Jesus as their Savior, and have all of the blessings that God intends through faith. Paul speaks to us in this regard in Romans 3.28. He says, For we conclude that a person is justified by faith without the works of the law. And that's a good passage for us to, to hear this morning because as we take a look at what is being said here, Jesus almost makes it sound like if you do all the things on this checklist, you'll get into heaven. But as you, as you hear this section of scripture, Jesus is not saying these are the things that have merit in my sight. He's saying, I know you. You are my believing sheep. And all of these works that you've been doing are evidence that you're living lives of faith. He says, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. From creation, I have had this place ready and waiting. I've been preparing places for all of you to enjoy my presence, my blessing eternally. He says, for I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was lacking clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And the righteous are puzzled. And they ask him, when, when did we do these things for you? When did we do these things for you? They weren't conscious of doing good things to earn the Lord's merit. They were simply living their lives of faith. And Jesus says, whatever you have done for the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he turns to those on his left, the goats. And he tells them, depart from me, you who are cursed. Cursed. God puts out the invitation to everyone. Trust in my son and you have forgiveness of sins and life. And there are those who will not have it. Like when Jesus was looking over Jerusalem before his crucifixion. I was willing to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks, but you were not willing. And they were going to be cursed in their unbelief with the forfeiture of everything Christ did and there would be nothing left for them except punishment for their sins. You get this picture that the believer standing before the Lord on Judgment Day does not have the list of all the failures in their life spun out before them. All the times that they fell to temptation and sinned. That would be a terrible thought for us, wouldn't it? Because we all sin much and daily. But when you get to the unbelievers who are cursed, because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior, their feet are going to be held to the fire for every single thing. He will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire which is prepared for the devil and his angels. This place was not 
part of the original creation. This place was an answer when the devil duped some of the other angels to try to rebel against God and take over. Hell was made, a place of unending torment. Jesus describes it as the place where the worm does not die and the fire never goes out. And when you look at what Paul tells us in his epistles on Judgment Day, when we're raised up, those who died will be given bodies that can never perish again. They'll last forever. And those of us who are still alive when the Lord returns, our bodies will be made that way in the twinkling of an eye. So these people being sent off to suffer in a place of eternal fire will experience it eternally. It's not a life sentence. It's an eternal life sentence. And again, he says to them, I was hungry and you did not give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Lacking clothes and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not take care of me. And they ask. But they ask in a more terse manner. It's like they're fighting for their innocence. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? Or a stranger or lacking clothes or sick or in prison and did not serve you? At that time he will answer them. Amen, I tell you. Just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Again, their lives were evidence upon evidence that they did not trust in God, that they did not know God's love and did not share God's love with others. They were living for themselves, whether they were trying to earn heaven by good works or didn't believe in heaven or thought maybe this day wouldn't take place. They did not do it. Now, there's always hope for the criminal that they might break out somehow. But with the Lord himself, the Almighty One, as judge, and his mighty angels who do his bidding, carrying things out, here is how it's going to happen. And they, the unbelievers, will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. We're looking at a blessed lot. All those people who are going to be in heaven forever with their Lord. On what, on what basis do they qualify? Not being the best and brightest, not being the most beautiful or wealthy or charming, but being those who trust in Jesus Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit in the gospel. Blessed. The certainty of it. There are a lot of people who looked at this text and say, well, if that day ever comes along, I'll worry about it then. I had somebody answer me that way when I tried to share the gospel with them years ago. Do you remember what the first word of this text was? Did it start with if? If the Lord comes? <laughs> it starts with the word when. It starts with the word when. You and I know that. You and I know that. And so Paul, in our epistle, tells us always be living like this is your last day on earth. Always be aware of his imminent return. We have this wonderful, comforting text. What if we slip up? I'm not perfect. And the devil tries to make us doubt. Does the Lord know whether you are a sheep or a goat? Does he know whether you are a Christian or an unbeliever? Yes, he does. He knows his sheep. He knows his sheep, and they will inherit eternal life. I pray that these words comfort you, but also move you with urgency to share the good news of the Savior with others as you have opportunity so that they too may hear and the Spirit may call them to faith before his coming takes place. Amen. Please rise. Away from.
from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. If you would look to your insert, we continue with our responsive prayer of the church for last judgment. Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear our voices. Heavenly Father, we confess with sorrow that we have sinned and deserve only your anger and punishment. We confess with joy that your unfailing love has redeemed us. Around us, we see the birth pangs of the last days, war, famine, earthquakes, false prophets, spiritual apathy. Keep us faithful to your word. Send your spirit to strengthen our faith so that we are always prepared for your son's return as judge. Build our fellowship of love as brothers and sisters in faith. Heavenly Father, as citizens in this land where you have placed us, we recognize that this current election cycle has been problematic. We pray that you would watch over the proceedings as they take place. We pray that the final outcome may be just and right, and we pray that you would watch over us and bless us through whomever is to serve us next. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Heavenly Father, we eagerly wait for Jesus to come again and make all things new. May he find us, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, faithfully enduring to the end through the power of your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, may your grace be with us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament on page 21. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who preserves his church to the end of time when he will come again as king to judge all people and take his own to glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Oh, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my true blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us and grant us your peace. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your seated. We will be using hymn 313 as our distribution hymn today. Uh, we will be having our continuous communion. Uh, the south side of the church first will come forward and then return back around that way and then we will go to our north, north side. blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given into death for your sin. Take, drink. This is the true blood our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins.
Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise, we join in the song of Simeon. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We bring our service to a close with the singing of hymn 326, May the Grace of Christ our Savior. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you could join us in worship this morning. We have a couple of notes. Um, this coming Sunday, we're going to not only uh, be looking at the, the season of the end times, but recognizing uh, that truth that the confirmands have been studying and uh, preparing for. Uh, McKaylin. And uh, Michaela Johnson is going to be confirmed next week, and we will be welcoming her as a communicant member at that time. Um, we have uh, also, uh, have those letters been sent out already? No, they will be sent out tomorrow. Okay. There are letters that are coming out to all of the members looking at uh, choosing a name for the church. There's three different options. There's examples and so on. So... It should, should give you something to think about, and, and we're hoping to get response from all the members. Okay. 
Um, did you hear that? <laughs> they're, they're, hoping to get the, they're hoping to get the responses by the 16th so that we can continue to move forward with the process. God bless your day and your week.